welcome back everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Hannah, also known as Tropical Plant Addict, and today I'm going to be planting up something a bit different. I've wanted one of these for quite a while, I've seen them on the internet over the years, and when I visited Australia earlier on in the year, I saw them in a market, I just had to have one. I knew that you could get them here in the UK, so I didn't bother buying one over there and then trying to bring it back in my suitcase or anything. So I jumped on eBay actually and found mine and it was $29.99, which I think is a very reasonable price. Let me grab it. So it comes in two pieces. So it's basically hand blown recycled glass that's been melted onto a piece of wood. And I just think they look really, really cool and kind of give a bit of a rustic look if that's what you're going for in your home. My home's filled with lots of rustic things, lots of wood, lots of natural things. So I thought this would look awesome on my coffee table. And I'd also love to get a bigger one for my dining table, maybe one with like multiple uh, bowls. So you could use this bowl as a terrarium, a vase, or you could even maybe place some air plants inside it, which I think would look really nice. Actually, if I was going to get one for my dining table, I would probably fill it with air plants. But today, I'm going to be planting up my jewel orchid cuttings in this bowl, and then just putting a few little decorations in there as well. As I mentioned, I got mine from eBay. There was loads of different ones to choose from, but I've also seen them on Etsy and other shops online. There are quite a few to choose from, so it took me a while to find the perfect piece. They're also unique, which is something that I really, really like about them. And I just love that the glass bowls are contoured. So if I take it off, you can see there that it's not just a flat bowl, it's got lots of different contours. I just think it looks really, really nice. So let me set everything up on the table in front of me and then I'll bring the camera around so you can get a good old look at what I'm doing. So here we've got the bowl, the jewel orchids, some decorations, and I've got my substrate on the floor, which I will show you as I go along. So these are jewel orchid cuttings that I took recently from the orchids in my Biob Air and they've been rooting for less than a month. And as you can see, they've already got a little bit of a root, both of them. These seemed much quicker at rooting than my Dicinia marmorata, which is the other jewel orchid that I'm going to be putting in the bowl. So a little bit about this orchid. They are a beautiful terrestrial orchid, well known for their shimmery neon green and gold lightning bolt patterned leaves. They can flower, but they're mainly grown for their foliage. These jewel orchids are found growing on the rainforest floors in warm, humid, and generally low light conditions. What's great about them is that you can actually grow them in various conditions, ranging from low to bright indirect light, but their preferred growing conditions are low to medium light. Definitely avoid direct sunlight with these orchids. You can propagate them by stem cutting or division at the base. I show you how to do this on one of my videos, which I'll link below for you. So that's the first orchid that I'm going to be planting in my bowl. The second orchid is a Dacinia marmorata. This one I've been rooting since the end of, I think, January. So it has got quite a good root system on it now. The roots are really weird. They're really kind of like furry. So the Dicinia marmorata is another variety of jewel orchid native to Borneo. And as you can see, it's got absolutely stunning dark burgundy leaves with striking pink, green and gold sparkling veins. Very, very appealing, very beautiful. This jewel orchid can take a little bit more light than the other jewel orchids. But again, they do prefer kind of low to medium light conditions and be very careful not to overwater this particular jewel orchid. This one likes to dry out a tiny bit in between waterings, whereas the other ones prefer to stay slightly a bit more moist. In regards to fertilizing, you can use orchid fertilizer once a month during the growing season. These are quite slow growing, so I wouldn't go too heavy on the fertilizer. Maybe dilute it down a bit more. 
I actually don't think I've ever fertilized my jaw orchids, but I think I might give it a go this summer, just a tiny bit once a month. You can grow these orchids in various substrates. I've seen people growing them in sphagnum moss with perlite, lecker, orchid bark mix, soil. But what I'm going to use is a terrarium mix with hydro drain clay pebbles at the bottom. So let me get the pebbles and show you. So I'm just going to talk quickly before I add them into the bowl because they do make a bit of noise and you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. So the clay pebbles at the bottom will act as a drainage layer and they also absorb water which will help increase the humidity. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a layer of the clay pebbles at the bottom of the bowl. Usually I would go ahead and add a layer of hydro fleece to separate the layers of substrate but I feel like it may ruin the kind of natural look so I'm not going to add that I'm just literally going to add the terrarium mix on top. So this is the terrarium mix that I use I also use the same stuff for my biorb air. You can actually just mix it yourself using coir compost, orchid bark, a bit of perlite, sphagnum moss and activated charcoal. So I've just turned it round as this is going to be the side that I'm viewing it from when I'm sat on my sofa. So now it's a case of deciding where to plant them. I might just kind of sit them on top of the soil to start with just to see. So I think I'm going to put the Dicinia marmorata more towards the back and then the two smaller jewel orchids at the front. These jewel orchids are very delicate so be very careful when you're planting them. So what I'm going to do to kind of stabilise them a bit is use some orchid bark around them just to help keep them upright. It's quite fiddly because the opening isn't that big, but I tried to get one that was big enough that I could fit my hand inside because some of them had really small openings and I think it would be a nightmare trying to water your plants So I thought it would be nice to add a couple of decorations, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit them in now. Hmm, I'll have a look. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this piece of wood out for now. I might try and break it into a few smaller pieces and then put them in later. So I've got this nice stone, which I should be able to fit in. And I thought it would be really nice to add a little fir cone in there. This one I had to dig out from my Christmas box, so it looks a little bit gold, but it's all right, that's all I had. Hopefully the orchids will appreciate this environment. The humidity should be enough to keep them happy, although I know they do appreciate really high humidity. But to be fair, I've been rooting these cuttings on the windowsill in my kitchen and they seem okay, so hopefully they won't be too fussy. I know sometimes if they're not getting enough humidity they can curl their leaves. In regards to light, I think they're going to be kind of medium to bright indirect light here on my coffee table during the summer, but once it goes into winter it'll be more of a medium light. So I'll just see how they go, I'll keep you posted and yeah, hope you like my creation. <laughs> So in regards to watering, I'll be watering the orchids around once a week with room temperature filtered water. So you can either mist them or use a miniature watering can. This one I got in Australia when I was there, I knew it would come in handy for something. Or you could use a shot glass because it is a little bit awkward if you've got a smaller opening, but I think think this should be fine or as I said a shot glass or you can just use a mister. I'm really pleased with how it's looking. 
So I'm going to go ahead and water the orchids and then I'll take a separate video so you can get a good close up of the bowl. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video, I'm really pleased at how my bowl turned out and I think it looks amazing on the coffee table. I'm actually going to be doing a living room plant tour soon, I know I haven't shown you my living room for quite some time, I think the last time I filmed it was possibly my Christmas tour maybe, and it's changed quite a lot since then. As a lot of you know, I do like to change around my decor every season, so at the moment the living room's kind of looking a bit jungly, rustic, rustic jungle kind of look, and I've brought a lot more of my rarer plants into the living room, so once it's all finished, well it's never finished, it's always a work in progress, but when I'm happy with it, I will do a tour for you. Thanks again for watching, see you all soon in my next video. Take care everyone.